Hi guys, welcome back to Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3. Today we're going to be continuing on, um, just doing s little missions here and there, uh, you know, just trying to get our level improved, trying to get the difficulty improved. So, you see we're, in this case, on this map, we cannot lose the Allied Headquarters no matter what. So... Ordinarily, if we were on a map, then we could potentially lose the Allied Headquarters as long as our unit was not destroyed at the same time. Uh, on this particular map, we do not have that option. So that's a, uh, you know, that's going to be our mission for now. You know, the strategic points. You can see there's a partner gauge field in the middle of the map uh, that we. You know that would be important for us to grab. Um, there's also looks like a mobile mobile suit factory up on the top part of the map. Um, the effect of that is just kind of different depending on what we're looking at. So you know, we just have to sort of go up and see what's there. And um, you can notice that Camille has spawned with a I think this is the gym. I don't think it's a gym too, but anyway. But we're now. One of the things about this game is that uh, different pilots will spawn in different suits depending on uh, a number of things. In this case, the only suits on this map are supposed to be white mobile suits. For some reason, heavy arms uh, qualifies. I guess it has enough white on it. Um, so Camille ended up in a gym, and that's why the uh, that's why the little enemies here are gyms and balls because they're they're white soldiers as well. So Ooh, quality on this this particular run is a little rough. So we're running around. Now, when I left off uh, last time, I mentioned potentially... I mentioned potentially checking out... Um, we're talking about the various Gundam series. So I guess the first place to start is the Universal Century. And it's since I've seen much of those shows just recently as part of the Gundam the Gundam Con uh, the, the website Gundam Info which is I think the, the official sort of Gundam uh, site released a number of things during a special convention of sorts um, including the movie compilations of Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, uh, Unicorn, and a few other just little things. War in the Pocket. Uh, they did not include 8th MS Team. But there, were, there was just a bunch of stuff that they all of a sudden just had available. Uh, including, including some stuff that I didn't watch, which included the Rise of the Trailblazer, the Gundam Double, Gundam Double O, um, you know. But for our purposes right now, we're just trying to stay in the Universal Century, and the Universal Century um, can be pretty confusing, and it's only going to get more confusing now because, well, they, you've got Hathaway's Flash coming uh, coming out this year in anime form. And Hathaway's Flash, uh, well, you know, trying to make things fit everywhere doesn't work. Um, Hathaway's Flash is based off of a novel describing the... Um, the adventures of Hathaway Noah as he attempts to um, sort of 
right wrongs on a, against a corrupt uh, Federation government sometime around about 10 years or so, um, 12 years or so if, you, if, you, if we're talking about Char's counterattack, about 10 years if we're talking about Unicorn. But Hathaway's Flash was originally based off of um, the novels, and it was based specifically off of the novel, the novelization of Char's Counterattack, which was different in several ways than the, um, which was different in several ways than the movie. You know, for instance, the the names of the suits and how gen generally powerful they were uh, that Char and Amuro got to use. Those things changed. You know, instead of the New Gundam, it was the High New Gundam. Instead of the Sasabi, it was the Nightingale. And if you see pictures of these things, you know, the High New Gundam is basically just the New Gundam with more funnels and some other stuff. And the uh, the Nightingale is just the Sasabi with, you know, more stuff. But there was something else that was different about the Char's Counterattack novels than the Char's Counterattack movie, and that was that Amuro had had a... Amuro had had kids. Bell Torchica, the journalist from Zeta Gundam, who's kind of more... kind of annoying in the Zeta compilation movie, or at least a new, the, a new translation compil, compilation movie. Uh, she's the mother of Amuro's kids. And that is where um, and it's that version of the story that Hathaway's Flash uh, refers to. Because another difference in the novelization is that it's not Chen who kills Kess uh, in that battle. It's Hathaway himself. And it's, it's, a, it's a bit different of a... Uh, it's a bit different of an angle, but my point is is that the Universal Century, even though it is the one Gundam uh, universe that has the most stuff going on, is about as functional as, um, or slightly less functional, I guess, than the Star Wars uh, universe. Because, you know, let's start at the beginning. Let's start with Mobile Suit Gundam. You want to the year is 0079, and you can go in, like, three different ways. You can follow the novelization of Mobile Suit Gundam, where Amuro dies at the end and loses the Gundam about two-thirds of the way through, um, replacing it with the Gundam Unit 3, um, instead of, in the show, Amuro just upgrades Oh, we died. Well, that sucked. Amuro just upgrades the uh, the RX-78 with features from the third RX-78 unit, whereas in the novel he just starts using the RX-78 unit three uh, altogether. And he also dies, and uh, his relationship with Sela is far more pronounced uh, than it is in. Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, the show. So then you've got Mobile Suit Gundam, the show, the original 1979 production. And, you know, for most people, I, that might be the Mo Mobile Suit Gundam that they look at and refer to. Uh, I think we very close. Oh, uh, well, we're in a very bad spot here. Oh god, it's not getting any better for us. Alright, so Mobile Suit Gundam, the show. Um, ooh, well, that's pretty. So, anyways, we've got Mobile Suit Gundam, the, uh, 
mistakes on the battlefield can only lead to... Okay, and lost the camera behind uh, the wall here. So, Mobile Suit Gun in the show is different in, or has its own features that are obviously Amuro survives. Um, but, you know, Makuve is dead. I think he dies in the, the duel at, at Texas Colony or something like that. Um, whereas in the the third possible starting point for Gundam, the Mobile Suit Gundam compilation movies, uh, Makuve survives. And it's kind of weird because um, one of the stories, sort of post Gundam pre Zeta stories, uh, called Portrait of a Young Comet. Basically uses that starting point um, for its for its story. So, which one is which one is the right answer as far as which one um, makes sense in the most sense in the timeline? And you would have to assume that it's got to be the TV show. But. Um, you know, there is an argument to be made that it should be the compilation movies, only in the sense that, you know, it was Tomino's chance to sort of fix a couple of small things that he might have want, thought were important or wanted to emphasize. Um, but for the most part, the three, uh, if you're not doing the novel version, obviously, which ends much differently, um... You know, the, the two, either the, the series or the movies, um, bring you to about the same place. And during the One Year War, there were a series of side stories that were produced for either uh, video games or their own sort of animated adventures. Um, you know, the first of the first OVA, I think, um, be, whoa, okay, let me put Setson in the Gundam. The first, uh, OVA being War in the Pocket in 89, and then, you know, moving on with, uh, you know, 8th MS team, but there's a whole series of other, um, other side stories from video games and such, like Xeonic Front or Cross Dimension. And the One Year War gets very busy, and in a way that I don't particularly like, because if you watch Gundam, um, you know, the, the point, one of the points that the show tries to make, um, and we died like three times in this level. One of the points the show tries to make, or doesn't, one of the things that goes on is that Amuro is essential to the Earth Federation war effort. Um, Amuro and the Gundam are essential to victory. You can't have uh, victory without, from one over the other. Or without one or the other. And then the side stories tell you that, oh no, that's not really true. Because there are evidently a whole lot more Gundam esque mobile suits uh, that were out there and doing neat stuff. Um, and in fact, even the numbering systems for those units disagree and have been modified over time. Um, And so, again, the One Year War gets really, really busy. But for the most part, the side stories don't do anything to uh, to cancel out the main narrative. It just makes it a lot less clean. Um, it makes, yeah, it just sort of makes that... It makes the story of Mobile Suit Gundam less special. Um, when you start to consider all the other things that were going on 
uh, during the one year war timeline. Yeah, that, that's that's my main problem with it. And, you know, it's kind of like new types. You know, things weren't necessarily a problem when it was just Amuro at the end of the at the end of the one year war, uh, finding his full new type power. You know, it really wasn't bad when it was just the Alex, you know, as sort of this second Gundam. Uh, that was out there and never saw action, you know, at the very end of the war. Um, but I think that things kind of got out of hand. And I'm going to continue on this point in the next episode. But since we finally, since we defeated the Gundam here, um, in this level of white units, we're going to move on. And I'll see you guys next time.